let's move on. We talked about doing the reversion of your stuff. Now let's move on and do some more stuff. So let's talk about getting the property returns to be flexible. What I basically need to do is it's all fine and good that I'm pulling these cash flows, but for the valuation piece, for the IRR, for the equity multiple, for the net profit or whole dollar profit as it's sometimes referred to, I need to make sure that these values only count the years that exist, right? So if I sell it at the end of year five, I don't want years six through 10. So really I gotta do two things. The first thing is I gotta move the location of this reversion value. Right here, it's just literally like pulling it based on nothing. It's just like a direct link. I need to make it vary the location of that. And I need to put in an if statement to say, if these years don't exist, then don't take them into account. The year part is simple. All I do there is an if statement. And I say, if this year is less than or equal to the control year, then do what you're going to do. Otherwise, put in a zero. And if I do that, and I drag that bad boy across, everything's fine, right? But then if I choose to make this control year, which I'll make blue, because it's always good to color code things. If I make this five or something, well now, you can see it moved. And then I got to do a thing here that says, make this vary too. So instead of just pulling reversion value, you know, instead of just pulling reversion value there, I'm going to do an if statement. I'm going to say, let's see here. Uh, I'm just going to do something that says, uh, let me make this real simple. I'm going to make this equal to the reversion value that I did here. Right. That's that. And then we're going to have the adjustments reversion value and that. And that's all fine and good. Okay, I'll make the underline. And now I'm just going to throw in an if statement. I mean, there are a lot of ways to do this, but you can also just do an if statement. You can say, if that year plus one equals the control year, then you're cool. Otherwise, do a zero. And if I do that, now it works. And what you'll see is, if I change the reversion from 11 to 6, it goes away. So now I'm going to take that and drag that to the left. And I'm going to drag that all the way over. And And what I should see is that if that's five, that's 89 million, which is I-64. Let's make sure it's linking up. Oh, I got a, I got a dollar sign that bad boy also. Sorry, let me dollar sign that, bring it over. And now, as you can see, it is working. So there it is. It's saying, take the year we're in, add one to it. In other words, if you sell it at the end of year, if you're using your fives NOI, as I did here, your fives NOI, um, and I'll just say, you know, that's the the Ford, I'll call it, instead of control year, I'll just call it year after sale. Cool. So now if that's five, then we should see this show up in four. And I got to do the same thing for all these other cells. Just like I did that, I'm going to drag that down. Before I do, though, what I could do to make this a little bit more robust is I could say, look, let's vary the row I'm talking about. So instead of doing I dollar sign 66, as I copy it down, maybe it will pull uh, I67, I68. And we have here I67, I68. And let me drag this to the left, to the right, and to the left. Put some underlines on that and then try to figure out why it's not working. 
Well, the reason it's not working is because I for forgot to put a dollar sign under the the row there. And you know, that's this is tricky. You got to remember to dollar sign everything or sometimes only the row or sometimes only the column otherwise it's not going to work. I copy it to the right. I copy it left. I drag it down. I underline it and now we got something that varies, right? You've got you know, if you sell it based on your fives NOI, uh, actually, let me double check this. If this is year after sale five, and this is equals quote ampersand, there we go. If that's year five, Let me just make sure I'm doing it right. I, I'm sorry. Now I've got myself jumbled here. If I'm doing the year of sale, I'm only calling this year of sale five, then this should be year six's NOI. Let me make sure that's year six's NOI and that I didn't do it wrong. Seven five oh six. Okay, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to say that this is that, if this is 4, then if I'm selling it at the end, so I'm going to, I'm going to play with this to make sure, sure this is right. I'm going to make this sell at end of year 4, and if I sell at end of year, if I sell it at the end of year 4, then this should be year five's NOI. Let me make sure it's year five's NOI. I just want to make sure I'm pulling everything correctly. Uh, no, the year five's NOI would be seven two eight seven. Okay, so let me make sure I'm doing everything right. So in this case, I'll do plus seven, which is seven two eight seven. which is year five, and I'll say that this is plus one, right? So if you sell at the end of year four, it use year five, and now I gotta do again a drag copy, just I gotta do some drags, that's annoying. But you know, whatever, I'm just trying to be consistent here. It's not the end of the world. You know, that's the thing with Excel, like every time you fix something, you end up fixing five more things, you know? I and mean, then you just you have to you have to learn to accept failure as just your operating state. You know, it's funny because people always think of this stuff as, oh, you know, how long does it take you? It's gotta be quick. It's like, well, if you get everything right, it's you know, five minutes, but if you don't, then it's hours of your time just effing around with stuff. Effing around being a technical term. Again, so if I sell at the end of year four, this is year five's NOI, then we go to returns, now I'm going to take that plus one out of there and I'm going to drag that across and copy it down. And now I got something that makes some sense. I'll take away the year zero stuff because that's not happening. Okay, cool. So now it's working. If I sell to the end of year four, I've got year five's NOIs, which drive the value, which again I have down here. That's all that's all cool. The loan balance, let me just see what the loan balance was at the end of year four. At the end of year four, it should be, here, let me just play a little bit. Let me just make it like year 11, year 10 or something. So if I sell at the end of year 10, that's year 11's NOI. And this should be the loan balance at the end of year 10. It is not, I'm off by a year. Let me fix that. Now it's 36,504. 36504, cool, that's working. Okay, we're whew, moving in the right direction. Version value is fine. That's fine. Okay, cool. Back to returns. Um, so now, I'm gonna again put it to like year, sell it to year five. That's my returns, and I'll just clean this up a little bit so it's not as 
messy. That's the 92, which is the 92 from over here. Okay, cool, we're good. Great, so this works. The unlevered is now working. There's your IRR, there's your equity multiple, there's your net profit. Now this stuff here is up here is a little bit messy, but I leave it alone. It's like, who cares? These are the operating cash flows if you continue. If you wanted to make a cleaner, you could throw in some if statements, you could zero out these values. I don't see a reason to, leave them there, who cares? Now down here we do something simple, similar. If this is my net from reversion, which is always coming from up there, I gotta again, move the loan payoff, and I need to play with these cash flows. So here, I'm gonna say, kind of like what I did earlier, I'm gonna say if the year we're in is less than or equal to the, come on, the reversion year, dollar sign, then pull the values, otherwise plug in a zero. Okay, cool. So I take that, I drag that to the right. Okay, so far so good. Now I gotta move the loan proceeds. To move the loan proceeds, it looks like I gotta move line 43, which is the loan payoff. Again, I'm gonna do a lookup. I'm gonna say, and this time I'm gonna make it really simple. I'm just going to do something that says equals if this year equals the year of sale, dollar signs, then pull the loan balance, otherwise put in a zero. I take this, I copy this to the right, I copy this to the left, and now we've got something that, as I like to say, can dance on the head of a pin. If I play with the sale date, if I sell it at the end of year 10, then we get year 11's NOI, which gives me year 11 sale, which backs out the loan balance from the end of year 10, which then drives the unlevered and levered returns. Whereas if I take the reversion and I make this year five, then this becomes year six. And that loan balance should be the end of year five, which it is, which then drives the returns over here. And we see here I am selling it at the end of year five based on year six's income, selling at the end of year five, and there you go. And then you know everything flows through. Um, just one more, just to play with it. If I make it the end of year seven, we see that that loan balance three nine six two three nine six one is three nine six two three nine six one. So everything's working, and we should see over here. Um, Well, it looks like we got some issues. Um, net from reversion. Okay, and I knew there was going to be something. Dollar signs. Drag to the right. Drag to the left. That's why you got to test it. Make sure you didn't like miss something. Um, apparently, I forgot to put some dollar signs in. So when I dragged it to the right or dragged it to the left, I was having problems. Uh, in any event, these cash flows, these levered cash flows, should then flow into the returns, and it looks like it does, um, and we don't have to do anything here. So, to make a long story short, if you have to take something that sells at a fixed date, uh, it's a little bit of brain surgery. You're going to have to take the date, make that vary, have that drive, the sale price, have that drive the loan proceeds, um, have to blank out the values that you don't want, both on an unlevered and a levered basis. And then after that, your IRR, your equity multiple, your net profit calculations would all perform accordingly. Um, cool. So, you know, that's a nice way to solve a problem in a few minutes. Um, 
you know, there's always fine touches. I mean, I could link everything back to the summary. I could worry about the year ending and make sure that I'm pulling the right look up or something. But, I mean, this is fine. I, I don't, I mean, you know, I guess I could, right? I could be like, let's do a look up that says if I'm looking for that on this table, then I'm going to give what's in the second position, do an exact match, and now when I look for seven, it gives me year ending January 32, which is uh, not correct. I'm going to have to add one to that. Let me just F and around with those here. Just add one. Cool. You know, so you might have to clean stuff like that up, right? So when you sell at the end of year seven, it's using year eight's values, which again, year eight is year ending January 33. So, you know, don't get me wrong. You might have some cleanup activities to do, but I think you get the basic flow for how this works. Anyway, hopefully you find this to be beneficial. Um, and here's just another model of me mucking around with it on a, on a Wednesday. Uh, if this sort of stuff fills you with joy and excites you, um, check out my website. Link's in the description. I also have a lot of courses that walk you through this stuff in a much slower fashion where you can follow along and do things piece by piece. Um, until I see you again, as I always like to say, keep building better models.